lives of the LGBT community and, and, and as the LGBT technology partnership sort of ponder what the implications of technology are, really where I see the largest opportunity. You know, we're really, really fortunate. Everybody in this room, if you live in the metropolitan D.C. Metropolitan DC area, um, Washington, D.C. has the highest LGBT population, I think roughly 10% of the population, uh, compared to about 3 or 4% if you look at um, the numbers of the statistics. But not everybody is as fortunate as we are to live in such a place that is that has so many gay people. Not, has, not everybody has the opportunity to be able to take out a device wherever they are, to be able to download, gain access. And so for LGBT communities outside of the coasts, because if you go ahead and strip off the coasts and you move in away from the coasts, there are people who are still struggling. Struggling in order to come out of the closet, struggling with their families, struggling to tell their doctor that they're gay or lesbian, bisexual or transgender. And so I think for the LGBT community in particular, and this also is a, a, appropriate for corporations because as corporations also decentralize, they're going to have employees scattered across the United States. The ability for LGBT people around the United States, but, but also globally, to be able to gain access to much needed information. The studies that we are working on um, with a number of academics we look at the implications of healthcare, mental health care, and the ability to be able to cross barriers so that if you're a little, a, a little kid in Arkansas or somebody who's, uh, who's transgender in Oklahoma and trying to gain access to much needed information, yet the only places that you can go in order to get that information is potentially your school, but your school uses filters in order to go ahead and not allow you to gain that information. The ability to be able to utilize that device to be able to gain access to broadband, regardless of where you are in this country, so that you can gain access to information, I think is probably one of the most important things, both from a corporate perspective and from an LGBT perspective. Think of it. How many of people, when we came out, would have loved to have the opportunity to be able to gain access to the internet? In fact, we did a, an event earlier this year um, with Commissioner uh, Ajit Pai from the FCC, who talked about his experience in growing up in a small town. And he, had, he went back to that a small town and had a conversation with a friend of his who's lesbian, and, and asked her about her experience in growing up and how the internet would have changed her, her coming out. I think the promise of the internet, the promise of innovation, is that no person ever around the world who grows up gay has to feel alone. That, to me, is the promise of technology. And frankly, it's the reason why we engage with technology differently from any other community. Joe, can I, can I just add to that? that um, Thank you. <laughs> you know, to echo what you're saying about the internet, the power of that, um, I mean, my coming out, I cannot imagine, I can't disconnect it from, from essentially what you're talking about. And I know there's some people in this room that would probably echo this, that, you know, the night that Don't Ask, Don't Tell fell. I mean, I was in town. I was at town. I was there with... <laughs> actually data surrounding um, social media and the impact of social media. Um, does anyone know, want to take a guess as to what that, what that was? Remember the red equal signs? Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So Facebook actually ran analytics. And I don't remember, there's a whole article, um, Anastasia Kubes over at HRC, um, as a mastermind, there's a New York, uh, New York Review article about, but, but it talks about the implications of it. And so when I was a financial advisor and I would talk about the implications of DOMA and estate planning and those sorts of things, one of the things that I recognized is that it was going to be a long time 
But one of the things that, that social media has done has accelerated everything. Like everything has been accelerated as a result of this. So a 12 year time frame, things have accelerated. And what makes me the most um, excited is the opportunity for things to accelerate so our friends in the trans community don't have to experience the same level of issues so it doesn't take 12, 15, 20 years. That it's accelerated, and that in the next couple of years we will be able to go ahead and do for the trans community what we've done for the gay and lesbian community. And that's what I think, when you look at the promise and the acceleration of innovation, those it's the real impact of the lives of LGBT people. I think that's all great points. Yeah.